So there is no real disappearance of value when this pyramid falls into itself. What is happening is a transfer of purchasing power from holders of derivatives of money to holders of actual money. Value doesn't get erased. It only gets transferred from one derivative to another derivative, or in this case, from a derivative into reality. So what gold holders are saying is that reality is about to be revealed. Hey guys, Rafa here from the End Game Investor, and today we're going to use John Exter's pyramid to show graphically and visually what is going to happen in the end game, what this has to do with the question of what is money and why nobody can seem to figure out the answer to that simple question and nobody can agree on it. The basic problem in economics, and I would say even in the Austrian school, is that people overthink it. It's really very simple. And the challenge is to clear out all the clutter and the muck that's been building up in academic circles for hundreds, if not thousands of years, and just get things down to the most simple explanation of what is going on in an economy. In an economy, people with different talents and different values are simply trading things to get what they want and giving people what they can produce. Somebody is good at producing X and wants Y, he trades X for Y. It's a cooperation so that everyone can get the most of what they want and provide the most of what they can provide. Instead of everyone for himself, which is the law of the jungle, you have cooperation, which is how the human race has conquered the world, basically. And since the economy is simply trading some things for other things, there are commodities that are more tradable and commodities that are less tradable. This is Exter's Pyramid. John Exter was an American economist, member of the Federal Reserve, and founder of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, of all things. I am the deadly Mexican stirring frog of southern Sri Lanka. I am very scary. It's a Sri Lanka frog! Exter's Pyramid really shows you how even now, everything from paper money all the way to the derivatives of derivatives of derivatives is really a derivative of gold. How is paper money a derivative of gold? Because paper money was born as a receipt for gold, which was the original money. On top of that, you have a derivative of paper money, which is treasury bills and government bonds. Those are promises to pay money into the future, and those have certain value. On top of that, you have corporate bonds or securitized debt or listed stocks, which are quoted as worth a certain amount of money, not all of money which exists. All of these things are hidden in the portfolios of a whole bunch of people in the world that are quoted at certain values. And as long as they don't all sell at the same time, then they can imagine that they have this value in their portfolio and it gives them a measure of emotional comfort. But People ask, when you have sudden sell-offs and collapses in valuations, what is happening to the money that the people thought they actually had? Did it disappear? The answer is no, it didn't disappear. It's just sinking down further into the pyramid. For example, when you have real estate up here in the blue, it looks like 217 trillion, and you have a real estate collapse, what actually happens is the value of paper money increases because the value of this real estate up here is actually falling into the pyramid and increasing the value of stuff below it. And so when a part of this pyramid collapses, it doesn't fall over, it falls down into the closer derivatives to gold. In 2008, we had a collapse of real estate, which increased the value of the dollar. So the purchasing power of this part of the pyramid grew while the purchasing power of the real estate shrunk because people who thought they had value in the portfolios and the real estate portfolios actually had less. And people with more paper money, as the value of that part of the pyramid fell into this part of the pyramid, increasing the purchasing power of this green part over here, the people with paper money actually had more. Now, when the central bank can reinflate part of a pyramid, what is actually happening is that the purchasing power from the base of that pyramid is becoming less, restructuring the parts of the pyramid up here so that people see more value on the top parts of the pyramid up here, whatever they may be, stocks, derivatives, real estate, etc. 
The thing is now, when paper money collapses, when the dollar itself collapses, there is nowhere for it to collapse down into except into gold because paper money is a derivative of gold. First, there was gold. Then there was paper money that were receipts for gold. And that has not changed, even though there is no fixed convertible price of paper into gold anymore. Paper money still is a derivative of gold. So that when this pyramid collapses, it will collapse into gold. When there is a collapse and people wonder what happened to all the value that I thought I had, the answer is none of the stuff that has collapsed in value has been destroyed. It all is still there. The question is, what has the purchasing power for that existing stuff now? It's not like any money is lost because money is gold. Everything else is a derivative. What is lost is the purchasing power of the derivatives you thought were money but are not. So when the entire pyramid collapses, it will collapse into gold and all the purchasing power for all the stuff that was built in the bubble on false valuations will collapse into the real money itself. So the, it's a transfer of purchasing power. It is not a collapse of value. It's a transfer of purchasing power from money derivatives, which includes the US dollar and everything on top of it, into money itself. Now, the question of what is money is only a question because this is all so complicated by the number of derivatives that have been invented since paper money began being traded, representing gold or derived from gold, that people have a hard time understanding what money is anymore, but all it is, is the most marketable commodity. There are There is no absolute money. There are more and less marketable commodities and certain physical aspects of money can make it more or less marketable. But still, even today, money is still a commodity traded for other commodities or other goods and services. That's all it is. To help explain that why, when the Fed is able to reinflate the pyramid, and reinflate the nominal values of all the derivatives on top of paper money and gold, why is it that gold appears to fall in purchasing power, appears to fall in value? And it does. Why? Because the pyramid is building itself back up out of gold so that the purchasing power of this section of the pyramid becomes less and the purchasing power of this section of the pyramid becomes more. However, the fact is that these valuations, you have 1.2 quadrillion over here, $210 trillion in government liabilities here, or 217 trillion real estate, all those numbers do not actually exist. There aren't these many dollars in existence. So it is all an illusion, which is only revealed once the pyramid collapses and it collapses back into gold. So when everything falls, it falls into the purchasing power section here and the people with the actual money get all the purchasing power for the stuff that everyone thought they had purchasing power over here, but don't actually have it. This question of what is money is very similar to actually a religious question of what is God? And I'll go into something a little esoteric here, but you'll see the connections in a minute. We have here a treatise by Maimonides, a 12th century scholar who lived in Spain, who goes into the history of how people began to believe that physical idols were actually God, because the idea itself is ridiculous that somebody makes a statue and thinks that the thing that he actually made is a god. I who have denied the gods of Egypt bow before you now. Show that you have power above the god of Moses. Doesn't make any sense. How did that happen? And he answers, it's actually derivatives. So he begins, during the times of Enosh, mankind made a great mistake. And the wise men of that generation gave thoughtless counsel. Enosh himself was one of those who made the error. Their mistake was as follows. They said God created stars and spheres with which to control the world. He placed them on high and treated them with honor, making them servants who minister before him. Accordingly, it is fitting to praise and glorify them, the stars, and to treat them with honor. Okay, makes sense. If God created the stars and put them on high. Then you should honor the stars because God created the stars. You want to honor God. After conceiving of this notion, they began to construct temples to the stars and offer sacrifices to them, again, honoring God. So the stars became a divine derivative for God himself, and they started worshiping the stars. Then what happened? Someone would inform them of a form that he had conceived or dreamed of and tell them that this is the image of the particular star, claiming that this was revealed to him in a prophetic vision. And so people 
began to make forms of stars or statues that represented the stars and bowing down to these things them instead of the stars. So the statues became a derivative of the stars, which were a derivative of God. Eventually, there were so many layers of derivatives that people forgot that God actually created the world and there was only one of them because of all these pyramidal structures or same as John Exter's pyramid, except in a divine sense, that people began to think that the idols that they created were actually gods in the same way that people think that the paper that they create or the stocks that are issued in an equity share or the derivatives that are issued when you make debt are money, but they're not. They are derivatives of money. And the only real money it, from which everything derives is gold itself in this modern economy. It really is the same with the Bitcoin crowd. They think that their derivative of money for which they trade money is money itself, but it can't be because money has to be a commodity in order to trade. So we see that when the divine pyramid gets too complicated and you have too many derivatives of what God is, then everyone forgets what God actually is and begins to worship their own creations, thinking that they are gods. But it's the same with money. When you have too many derivatives of money and you don't understand that everything derived from an original money, then people start to think that their derivatives of money are actually money and begin to hoard those. But then they don't realize that once the pyramid falls into itself and all the purchasing power is transferred from the derivatives to money itself, that they really had nothing the whole time. Money is not an illusion, it is a thing. Just as no matter how many derivatives of God you make, there's only one of them. And everything else is a derivative of that. And so what gold and silver bugs are essentially betting on is this. What we are betting on is that the part of the pyramid that is now at the most threat, the biggest threat, is government bonds, treasury bills, and paper money. This is the part of the pyramid that is being threatened right now. This part is under attack with consumer price inflation and with rising interest rates. Once this part of the pyramid falls down into the gold part of the pyramid, then everything else from up here also falls into it. And so the entire purchasing power of what is now in here in this paper money part of the pyramid and the government bonds part of the pyramid goes into gold, which can now buy everything of total value here. And you have the transfer of purchasing power from paper money and government bondholders to gold holders. So there is no real disappearance of value when this pyramid falls into itself. What is happening is a transfer of purchasing power from holders of derivatives of money to holders of actual money. Value doesn't get erased. It only gets transferred from one derivative to another derivative, or in this case, from a derivative into reality. So what gold holders are saying is that reality is about to be revealed. How much longer do we have? Probably by the time that 10-year and 30-year rates reach 3 to 3.5%, you're going to start seeing a dump of these derivatives for dollars, which will then be spent on real assets, chasing reality faster and faster until all the derivatives fall to zero and everything gets priced in terms of ounces of gold and silver. That is the end game. In the end game, Extra's pyramid will look very similar to this, except instead of these annotations of everything being priced in dollars, you'll have gold at the bottom, paper money on top of it, priced in the same gold number with government bonds on top of that, priced in the same gold number and everything, it'll be simply like a line. That, instead of this being bigger than the blue part, being bigger than this lighter part, being bigger than this blue part in a pyramid shape, it will just be a big line or a block that creates much slower, sustainable growth. And what people have in their portfolios is what they actually have because everything becomes exchangeable for gold and you don't have this illusion of inflated value as you go on top of the pyramid. But the beauty is whatever shape the pyramid will be conceptually, you still have the same amount of stuff in the economy, the same amount of real things. And so everyone becomes richer in real terms as real money gets distributed again. This is Ralphie with the Endgame Investor. 
I hope this gave you a much better conceptual understanding of the end game in terms of John Exeter's pyramid and what we are to expect and what the loss of value really is. It's not the loss of value, it is the transfer of purchasing power from the holders of derivatives to the holders of real money. That is what we can expect in the end game. It is coming soon. Get ready for it. There is not much time left. If you enjoyed this video, check out the Endgame Investor at the link in the description below or sign up to be my patron on Patreon where I go more deeply into the biblical aspects of liberty and monetary freedom and economics. Thanks. Have a nice day.